A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son brings grief to his mother. That sounds like a good proverb for us to consider today. Now, it's a bit of a sad proverb as we are approaching Mother's Day because it reminds us that the last thing we ever want to do is disappoint Mama. You probably grew up with the same rule my brothers and I had, and that is you never want to get on the bad side of your mother. If Mama isn't happy, nobody's going to be happy. So, in the spirit of keeping Mama happy, let me offer you some words of wisdom from Solomon regarding mothers. Solomon's mother was Bathsheba. I like to imagine that at some point, when that little boy Solomon was growing up, an awkward moment came. Maybe around the dinner table, he's looking at his parents, and he asks that innocent question, so, how did you two meet? Now, if you're David and Bathsheba, what are you going to say? I mean, about the best that Bathsheba can do is say, well, your father, he was staring at me while I was taking a bath. Their relationship got off to a rocky start, but it did get better over time. And that's always true for us, that if we put some effort into it, things can get better over time. Now, when Solomon in later life reflects back upon his parents and describes them in his writings, he speaks of good things. Now, there's good and bad, but he focused on the good. Probably a good idea for me and you as well. In our relationships with our loved ones, our family, and our friends, there's good and bad. But as time passes, always best to remember the good, forget some of the other. He describes his mother as a good mother. And then Solomon portrays what a good mother looks like. Perhaps you should compare what he describes to your own experience. Solomon says, a good mother is hard working. She watches over the affairs of her household, and she does not eat the bread of idleness. Oh, she's busy getting things done in behalf of her family. A good mother provides good care for her family. She gets up while it's still night, and she provides food for her family and portions for the servants. Now, I don't want to push that one too hard, because not everybody is a morning person. Some of us need a little extra sleep in the mornings to make up for the late nights that we do. Now, whether you're early morning or not, what I know is that every good mother will do whatever it takes to take good care of her family. She'll put in the extra effort, the extra hours, if that's what it takes to keep everybody happy and provided for. A good mother, Solomon says, will provide good care when it snows. Now, she has no fear for her family under the cold weather and the, and the snow because they're all clothed in scarlet. In fact, she herself is looking pretty good. She has coverings that she's made for herself. And she is clothed in fine linen and purple. This is a woman that makes sure that her family is well-dressed, well-fed, ready for what lies ahead of them. Solomon also says that she'll open up her arms to the poor. She'll extend her hands to the needy. There's the idea of compassion, generosity for those who are in need. She not only takes care of her own family, but she'll take care of those who come to the house and they need a helping hand. She's generous to a fault. And some of us know stories of the mother who's willing to give whatever it takes to make someone else happy, even that last piece of pie or cake, because that's what you need to be satisfied. He goes on to say that she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days that are to come. Oh, she's a strong and reassuring person. And even as a child is a little bit scared and timid about what lies ahead, the mother doesn't show any of that, even if she feels it, she doesn't show it, because she needs to put on a strong front to be a reassuring, comforting hand for her kids. He says that the good mother speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. There's an aspect of motherhood we all know so well. Mothers are a primary focus on nurturing and teaching and instruction and advising. I mean, that's one of the things they do best. And you know, mothers have a tendency to want to tell you what to do, whether you want to hear it or not, because after all, mama knows best, they told us. Well, maybe so, and maybe not. You know, it doesn't much matter, because they're going to give it to you anyway. And what we often find is that what they said is probably right after all. Even if you don't want to hear it, you always do well to listen to what mother says. That's what Solomon tells us. He says, my son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. You know, one of the songs I grew up with is that song, Mama Told Me Not to Come, written by Randy Newman, made popular by Three Dog Night. 
Now, if you listen to just the title alone, let alone listen to the rest of the song, you pick up on it real quickly. It's about someone who's in an experience, he realizes, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be involved in this at all. And Mama told me not to come. Well, that's right. Should have listened to Mama. And some of us are so hard-headed, we have to learn that the hard way. we got to first get ourselves in trouble, and then we humbly admit, I should have listened to my mother. Well, that's Solomon describing what a good mother looks like. That's something any one of us can say, oh, I know exactly what he's talking about. I've been there. I've seen that. And I hope for those of you who are mothers, you can say, that's exactly what I've tried to be. Now, Solomon also goes on to talk about family pride. He says regarding good parents and good grandparents, they are to be loved and appreciated by their children. Solomon speaks of the good mother and says, her children rise up. They call her blessed. And her husband praises her. Her husband will say, now there are many women who do all sorts of noble things, but she surpasses them all. A lot of good people out there, but my wife, she's one of the best. Solomon advises us to give honor to our parents and our grandparents to do it now and from now on. Speaking once again of the good mother, Solomon says, now charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting. The things we see and appreciate now, they'll pass away. I'll tell you something that will remain. A woman who fears the Lord. Now, she'll be praised forever. You see, the legacy of faith that's passed along by our mothers, our fathers, our parents, our grandparents, that legacy remains even after they're gone. And so Solomon says, you want to honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. In other words, you want to give honor now and from now on for all the good things that you have received from your parents and grandparents. You know, in the family, it should be a mutual admiration club where children admire their parents and grandparents even as the parents and grandparents love them. Solomon says that children's children are a crown to the aged. Grandparents love their grandkids. I can testify to that. But he also says that parents should be the pride of their children. It works both ways. Grandparents loving their grandkids and children loving their parents and grandparents. Now, all of this then provides good motivation for holy living. That is, as I live my life and choose what to do, I want to make them proud. And if you want to make your parents and grandparents proud, you got to do what's right. Solomon says, the father of a righteous child has great joy. And the man who fathers a wise son will rejoice in him. So may your father and your mother rejoice. And may the one who gave you birth always be joyful in you. Yeah, we want to make them proud by doing what's right. Also, make them proud by being smart, by being wise. Solomon said, a wise son brings joy to his father. It's the foolish son who brings grief to his mother. And you know, this formula works whether or not your parents were godly, Christian, faith people, or even if they're unbelieving. You see, even unbelieving parents can still be proud of how their children turn out if they practice good behavior and wisdom. Those things are still something that parents can be proud of, no matter what their faith may be. Now, speaking of faith, you know, in our families, we often pass along our tradition of faith to our children. That's a good thing. Solomon encourages us to take what you know about the Lord and train your child accordingly. He said, raise up a child in the way that he should go. And then when they are old, they'll not depart from it. Now, that's good practice for parents and grandparents. It's also a good challenge for me and you as we think about what our parents and grandparents taught us about the faith. We need to remember what they taught us and practice what they encouraged us to do. Otherwise, all of their teaching, all of their work, all the nurturing they did would be in vain. You know that song that we hear so often recorded by every country and folk group that's out there, Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Now, the the song itself is a fun song, great to listen to, but listen to what it's talking about. Will the circle be unbroken? That is, our loved ones have gone on before to that heavenly glory. question is, are you going to be joining them, or are you going to break the circle? You see, it's encouraging you to follow the example of your God-fearing parents and grandparents so that one day you can join them. I want to suggest this to you today that the best way 
to honor our godly parents and grandparents is to follow their footsteps on the path to heaven.